Lithium-ion batteries are the most advanced rechargeable battery technology being used around the world, and they dominate the electronic mobile sphere, mainly cell phones and laptop computers. For the past decade, they have entered other industries, noticeably the automotive industry with Tesla as its main propagator. Although their specific energy and specific capacity increased over the years, finally reaching acceptable levels for transportation, electric cars manufacturing still have to deal with the considerable number of batteries required for these cars. As an example, Tesla cars requires in between 4 to 8,000 batteries, depending on the model. But this number could be dramatically reduced if we solve one of the main problems of these batteries with high capacity anodes surpassing the theoretical capacity of graphite, which is the most widely used, at 372 mAh per gram. An ongoing study has maybe proven that graphene may be the solution for this problem. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. As we all know, conventional lithium-ion batteries have increased their specific capacity over the years, but there is still much more to go, since they are, to date, at only a fraction of their theoretical capacity. Graphene has a theoretical capacity of 744 mAh per gram, with an outstanding electronic mobility at 10,000 cm2 per volt and extremely high lithium diffusivity at 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 6 cm2 per s. It holds great promise as an anode material for high-energy power lithium-ion batteries. But the problem has always been producing high-quality graphene sheets, as we know that any defect will decrease the electric conductivity, electrochemical and structural stability, which in turn has a negative effect in power density and coulombic efficiency. So far, tests conducted with graphene yielded unfavorable results due to how difficult it was to produce high-quality sheets. But in this research, titled High-Quality Mesoporous Graphene Particles as High-Energy and Fast-Charging Anodes for Lithium-Ion Batteries, they were able to improve high-quality sheets yield by chemical vapor deposition using a mesoporous magnesium oxide as a template and catalyst to start the process. And then they added an additional step with microwave radiation. The idea was straightforward. You have a structure full of holes, whereby using chemical vapor deposition, the nitrogen-doped graphene accumulates in these pores, reacting with each other and in turn forming a graphene sheet. All you need to do now is to submit the structure to an etching process to chemically remove the magnesium oxide template. But this technique generally yields higher defect density graphene sheets. Nevertheless, to counter this problem, they blast the structure with microwave radiation, which in turn enables the structure to rearrange itself and fix the defects. To achieve that, they placed the sample in a vial with argon and microwaved it with 1000 watts for 5 minutes. Once the synthesis is over, what you get in the end is a high-quality nitrogen-doped mesoporous graphene, or HNMG for short. The reason they used nitrogen doping was to improve electrode-electrolyte interactions by creating lithiophilic surfaces moieties, which is nothing but distinct sites on the sheet that facilitates nucleation, or simplifying to the extreme here, a place for lithium to allocate itself to. This has several advantages for high energy density and fast charging capability. And as we will see next, this is one of the reasons they were able to achieve phenomenal results. I must inform you, my dear viewer, that the following tests were done using a mass load of 1 mg per centimeter squared, which is about 10 times less than actual batteries. And yes, that will vary depending on the battery technology. Also keep in mind that the data shown here for other electrodes use the same mass loading so we can compare apples to apples. Even though achieving the maximum theoretical capacity of 744 mAh per gram is a bit over the top, tripling the current benchmark number would already have a dramatic impact on many things. But results for high-quality mesoporous graphene went beyond that reaching upwards of 1,138 mAh per gram at a C rate of 0.2. And that is not all. After 500 cycles at a C rate of 2, the capacity retention stayed above 
In order to get these numbers, they first tested both the high-quality nitrogen-doped mesoporous graphene against itself, but without the sheet going through the microwave phase. So basically, they compared high-quality with mediocre. This allowed them to verify if this step would cause any change, if at all, to the structure of the electrode and if performance would increase. Now, executing the same test for both, with a mass loading of 1 mg per centimeter squared and a C ratio of 2, they had similar discharge performances with 945 mAh per gram against 952. However, the big hit happened when charging, as the HNMG showed a capacity of 723 against 612. And after 500 cycles, the high-quality NMG still had a discharge capacity of 774 mAh per gram, while NMG was at 628. Remember, this was only to show if there would be a significant difference of the graphene sheet quality. And this result tells us that the last step with microwave radiation did increase performance by about 23%. Now, if you were kind of lost with these numbers, let me clear things up by introducing graphite electrode numbers. Given the same experiment, on its first cycle, it held a discharge capacity of only 135 mAh per gram. And after 500 cycles, it dropped more than 10 times, or to 12 mAh per gram. In this experiment, high-quality NMG was 64.5 times better than conventional graphite after 500 cycles. Talk about impressive! But the name of the game for batteries is the initial columbic efficiency, or ICE for short. Since cathode materials represent most of the cost of the battery, a low efficiency means lithium-ion depletion, which in turn decreases the overall energy density of the battery and renders it useless after many cycles. It is normal for batteries to have a low initial columbic efficiency and then stabilize for many cycles. For instance, conventional batteries using graphite will have an initial columbic efficiency in between 45 and 55 percent, and can sustain that for about 300 cycles at 1C. HNMG, on the other hand, is at 76.5% at 2C for 500 cycles, which is significantly higher than its counterpart. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is here. More tests were conducted in other scenarios, and the results were, at worst, still 20 times better than graphite electrodes. Just to extrapolate things a little bit, the Sony Murata battery has a nominal specific capacity of 54.4 mAh per gram. When HNMG was submitted to its most demanding experiment with a high charge discharge rate of 40C and with a mass load of 6 mg per centimeter square, it still provided 221 mAh per gram which is almost four times higher than that of the battery nominal specific capacity. On top of all of that, it still was able to retain more than 93% of its capacity after 500 cycles, where conventional batteries will disintegrate if you do 500 cycles at 40C. So yes, this is amazing. This research pretty much confirms graphene as a major player in future battery technology. Now, I would go as far as saying that it will most likely increase battery-specific capacity by four times at least, but to be sure, we will have to wait for the first batteries to come out to see if this holds true. Fingers crossed. But the key takeaway here is not so obvious. The production method of HNMG used in this research is by far one of the easiest to produce 3D graphene, and as the experiment showed, it is fully capable of yielding a high-quality product with just one more simple step. This solves one of the biggest problems we had to date, which is the simplification of graphene production. Although this method isn't anything new, it does serve the purpose, since it can be easily scalable at a low cost. But I must remind you that most of the cost of the battery comes down to the cathode material, so how this impacts the final price will be with the increase of stored energy. Battery prices most likely will remain the same, but with much more stored energy. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.